Today, I'm going to spin up a Cisco 9800CL in an EVNG and have a real physical AP join it. I'll show you every click and command so you can follow along and get it working SSID fast. I will deploy this controller with a simple SSID with a WPA, map it to a VLAN, bring a physical AP online. What do you need for this? Before we start, the prerequisite would be is you need to have an EVNG running already. You need a Cisco 9800 CLIS. So obviously, in your EVNG, you need to have a few resources available that is recommended. Four virtual CPUs, four to eight gigs of RAM. I'll use eight. Three NICs that are already there. I'll also show you that I tried a QCOW2 image first, renamed it to vertoa.qcow. That didn't boot for me. So I'm using the ISO method from the EVNG guide that you're seeing right here. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to the download website and actually go ahead and get the. If you go to Cisco software download, and if you want to just click on 9800 CL wireless for cloud, and you want to go to iOS XE software, you can get the 17.15 one, or you can even get the latest one if you like. Cisco marks anything as star, it's pretty much like this is what we recommend. We've tested it, everything looks good here. So if you want to go with this one, let's go ahead and get this one here. Now, a couple of points I want to point out here is you'll see that there are a whole bunch of them. This is the one I tried before where you could directly download this, copy it into the folder, which is already a QCOW image, but that didn't work for me. The OVA option is perfectly fine, and I've tested that with if you're running directly into your VMware workstation, that works perfectly. For EVNG, what you do is you need to get this one here, which is the .iso. Simply just click on download. Obviously, you need to have credentials to log in and the download. And once you're logged in, you basically just click on the ISO. You need to accept the general terms and conditions and the download really starts up here. So we'll give it a few minutes till the downloads. While the download is still in progress, another thing we can do is let's look at the instructions to see what exactly are they saying. Now, what it says is you need to create a folder under this directory, which is specific. This cannot be changed. This has to be lowercase c, 1900cl, dash, and then you can have your version number. Now, obviously, this instruction shows about 17.04. We're doing the 17.18, which is the latest available today as we are recording this one, which is October 2025. Interesting part here is that you don't have to do this really. You can actually go and log into, I'm using PuTTY and I can actually use those commands and create those. The way I prefer to do it is I use WinSCP. The WinSCP, when I log into my EVNG server, basically what I have done is in my desktop, I have all my images that I have been working on with my EVNG. I have also another folder for my 1900 controller, which one you see right here, and I can actually throw in uh, any files in there. Other option would be is you can just right click here and I can create a new one, right? The older version that I had here was the 17.15, but now since I'm changing this one, I can change it to right click, I can just rename it, and I can just say, 17.18 or whatever version you're using doesn't matter right so we'll just call it 17.18 here and when you open this up and once the file is downloaded i will actually put it into my folder here and i move it from here which is much easier than doing the commands that's just my way of doing it but if you like to do the command way and follow uh, the actual guide here which is perfectly fine the folder that is created inside that you need to have this image so what i was trying to point out before was what i did was i created that folder i downloaded the q card directly here which was about three and a half gigs and i start put i put it there renamed this file to vertoa.qcow2 and i tried to run it up it showed as a node in evng but it would have not run so that's why I opted to the other option, which is the guide. I said, okay, I'll download the ISO and I'll go that method. So that's what we're trying right now. It looks like the download is done. So since the download is done, I'll copy it from my download folder, just move it here. So it's 17.18.01. Uh, that's the file. So all I need to do is go back to my WinSCP, go to my folder. And this was the earlier one that I had up and running. Now I'm going to try this one free in front of you. So we'll take that. And we'll drop it there and it will just start to copy it. And then we'll go back to our actual 
guide to see what exactly does it tell me. Once you've done that, I've downloaded it. I need to create a hard drive so that I can install the QCO image. So all I'll do is I'll take that, and it's a 16 gig drive that I'm creating for it. So I can simply use PuTTY for this, okay? And first, I need to get into that folder that I'm that I want to want to write. So what I do in this case is I can just go CD. And as you mentioned that, and then as you notice that I was using 17 dot 18 there. That's what I called my folder. I'm in that folder now. I'm gonna run that command so I can create an hard drive. Okay, and it's going and creating it for me once it's done. I can do an ls dash l and i can see that uh, it has created a vertoa.qca file and then i also have the iso here now the next step is to actually start the installation okay so for that you need to use this command right here the only difference is you need to match the file name that you have now this file name is obviously based on the file here you need to change that to one that you have okay so in order to do that i'll use my trusted notepad and i will make sure that i copy the right file here so this is the file i had before now since we're doing the 18 version we'll just go and copy that so simply if you notice that this is the iso i can go say rename copy that And I have the file. So I'm all I'm saying is this is what the command is. Copy it. Now let's go back to our putty and you see the command there. And you pick up the second option, the serial console, click enter, let it start its thing. Once it's done that, second option. It's saying rebooting from all that. So it's just showing showing you the steps now. Once you've done that, you can just exit by hitting the combo of Control A. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops, it's going to take some time to go through all the stuff. So you see that it's just going through everything. It's ready, and it's in getting taking me into the actual initial config mode. I'll exit from here because now I know that the particular image has already been created and it's inside. And the way I can check that is if I go into my Win SCP, and if I refresh this over here you'll see this file created, right? And this is done already. One more thing, so save space is, this is the ISO, I don't need it anymore inside my EVNG, so I can go ahead and delete it, absolutely. Other thing I would like to do is I wanna go back to my actual file, and I can go right click node, and now you notice that I see a Cisco 1900 controller. You have that there. RAM, as I mentioned to you before, I wanna go a little more higher. Uh, this is standard. I didn't change that. Sure, that's saved. Now, this is my network. And if you don't know what the network is, you can watch the previous videos. It's basically I'm using my EVNG and I want to make sure that. So, everything for me is a flat network right now that I'm working just to keep things simple. So, uh, this is going to be bridged to my local network where I'm going to plug in the AP so that the AP actually is able to easily find the controller and we're able to, you know, uh, have a SID broadcast for you. So before we do that, it, remember it had three connections. Just to keep it simple, what I'll do is I'll connect all of them to my local network, which is bridged. Once I've done that, I can right click start and I can double click on it. And as you've seen the previous videos, I use secure CRT for my EVNG setup. There is a video for that. If you like to use that, watch the steps. Now, once it boots up, it's going to pretty much take me to the same thing that you saw on the putty, where it's going to ask me for initial config. So we'll go through that. Do you notice that it starts to show up here? So now I'm booting up my Cisco controller here. It's saying that I don't have a static uh, config. Obviously, it's the first time we're setting this up. We'll let it go through the motions here. And the same prompt comes in. Would you like to go to the initial config? Now I can just say yes here. So now it lets me set up because now I have all those connected, right? So choose which interface you want to use. Let's say I want to use gigabit one. Now config and static IP address. I'm going to give it a IP address. 
Now this would be different in your case, depending on what your setup is. So I'm using a flat network, which is a 192.168.100.0 slash 24 network. So I'm decided to give it dot 60 here, maybe. Uh, oops, sorry, I had to say yes there. So yes, what's the IP you want? 192.168.100.60. What is your subnet mask? It's a slash 24, so 255.255.255.0. Do you want to configure a static route? Sure, yes. Enter a destination prefix. So pretty much means if I want to go somewhere, what should I do? So for everything, you want to just say 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0 subnet mask again everything so 0, .0, .0, 0, 0 what's the forwarding router that's going to be my gateway for everything which is my router on this network dot one enter a management username so you can set up a username here that you want to use when you log in so whatever password you set up here make sure you remember it i am just going to make it simple as admin and then cisco one two three would you like to go with a wireless setup for now i'll say no enter your selection now it's asking you what do you want to do go to the ios command prompt without saving or save the configs i'll do two and it's going to build that configuration it has that configuration now and once you have that what you can do now is you can open up your browser 198 100.60 and obviously because it's a https certificate usually that you see that you say yes i know and you are in right now admin cisco 123 that i set up during my setup and that's it i'm in right now right you notice that you can change certain things for example if you want to show that i am in a different country Set that up, date is fine, time zone is fine. That's perfectly fine, don't see a problem there. You can set up a wireless network here if you like, or if you wanna do that later, we can do all that later as well, right? So it's gonna ask you for enter password for everything, just to keep it consistent. I'm gonna use same Cisco 123 everywhere. Cisco 123, Cisco 123. Obviously you don't wanna do that in your actual setup, it's a lab, so anything goes. The configuration is successfully applied. Perfect. Obviously, it logged me out. I can log in with the same credentials. And we're in, right? So first step successfully completed. What we did was we basically had an EVNG running already. We got an ISO from Cisco's website. And for once time installed, what we did is basically just created the right folder with the right name, created the hard drive, and then from that hard drive booted so that we could create a QCOW image. Once that was done, we deleted the ISO that was not required that was sitting in the EVNG. Once that is done, you go to your actual EVNG, right click nodes, click the nodes, connect it to your network. In my case, it's a bridge network, all the three interfaces, one, two, three. And you saw me doing going to the setup and you're in right now. The next step is I'm gonna try and boot up an AP uh, on the same network and have it join. So let's do that next. Okay, so I just plugged in Cisco AP, which is a Cisco 9176 AP, and it just clearly showed up here. If you notice that it just shows all the networks are up. We obviously don't have a VAN LAN yet, uh, but it does show an AP. So if I click on it, that's the AP that we're getting. As you notice, it's a CW9176i. Now, in order to have a broadcast running for an SSID, it's simple as we're going to go back to dashboard and actually we can create a WLAN network here. So let's go ahead and do that. You know, the easiest way to do that would be is there are a lot of options actually. So the easiest one is right here. And something if you don't know, you can also click on this show me how. This it basically tells you whatever you need to do. So if you want to create a new AP profile or you want to know how to join an AP or create a WLAN, all is right here. So if I click on it, you'll see all the stuff that's here. So configure WLAN, it will basically walk you through. All the places that it needs to be so let's configure wlan and its security policies for you can you use an existing lan and it basically takes you through every setup that you want right so create a new wlan
So let's configure uh, WLAN and its security policies that you can use an existing WLAN for effect. So let's go there. WLAN, create a new, sure. So profile name, let's call it SID, let's call it CW9176. That's the AP name. Okay, status is disabled. That's when you're setting things up. And we can enable that. Or we can leave it disabled, doesn't matter. This is setting. Here is when you can have the policies, radio policies. Let's do layer two. So WP. Can disable that. SAE and then that's it. Perfect. So after all that, once we have the van up, once we have that AP up, we have the van less. Uh, so we have the AP up. We also have the wireless up. So everything looks up and running. If you want to validate it, you can use any of the tools. I just have ACA. So I'm going to use that. It shows me that I have a Cisco radio. This is the side we configured is up and running. And that's about it.